Hi, my name is Alexis and welcome to Becoming All She. This is a platform where we focus on purpose, legacy, and finding joy after loss. Today, I really wanna to talk to you about what that means to find joy after loss. But before I get into that, let me say, if you clicked on this video and you're here, I want you to know that I'm so sorry for your loss. I know how painful and devastating and sudden loss can be and how it can completely just leave you at the bottom of the bottom. It's so hard to capture what that feels like, but I want you to know that I know what that feels like and I'm really glad you're here. Because the good news is, is you're here. <laughs> That's the good news. The good news is that every day that you're here, there is an opportunity to get a little bit stronger, to get sharp, just a little bit sharper, persevere just a little bit more, and it's one day at a time. And each day that you push just a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, one day you wake up and the transformation will have happened. And while the pain of grief never really goes away because the person that we lost is always in our heart. You become able to tolerate that pain a little bit more, a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. And that's why I'm here today because I want you to know that it's possible because I'm doing it. And notice I said I'm doing it. There's no <laughs> quick an easy route to this. There's no secret hack. The fact of the matter is I still have days where I cry. I still have days where I'm sad. I still have days where I miss my husband terribly. But I know, one, that God is close to me when I need him the most. And I know that while my husband's no longer here on earth, I can feel his presence all the time. And that gives me comfort. And so for you, there comes a point where you have to find what it is that gives you comfort. You have to make a decision. And that's what happened to me. After my husband passed about three years ago, I completely unraveled and I didn't even know it. The fact of the matter is, is that the way that I managed my grief was by working, putting my head down and just plowing through the pain, hoping that if I didn't pay attention to it, it would go away. And the fact of the matter is, because I didn't pay attention to it, it didn't go away. I lost about 30 pounds, I was an insomniac, I was depressed, I was anxious, and every now and then I had bouts of suicidal thoughts. It was the lowest I had ever been. And one day I finally woke up and I said to myself, something has to give, something has to change because I'm not gonna make it if it doesn't. And I got on my knees and I asked God, I begged God, God, please do something because I don't know what to do. I've gotten to the end of myself and I need you to step in. It was the first time in a very long time that I had reached the true point of surrender. And while reaching that rock bottom that brings us to our knees is so painful, there's something that is utterly so beautiful about it. Because it's in that moment that God has the opportunity to overwhelm you with love and peace and guidance that you've never known before. And so for me, what that looked like was a trip to Denver. I have my best friend and my cousin that lives here and she recommended that I come out and so I did. And a weekend trip turned into a week long trip and I knew something was different when I was here. I'd been to Denver, I don't know how many times. I, I used to be a flight attendant in another life. That's another video, <laughs> um, but as many times as I had been to Denver, there was something different about this trip. And so when it was time for me to go back home, I remember so vividly that plane hitting the runway in Miami when I landed, which is where I lived. And 
the Lord said to me, it was so quiet and so loud at the same time. You cannot stay here. Your healing is not going to happen here. And so that was all the confirmation I needed. The very next day, I put in my notice to my job. And uh, three weeks later, my son and I, who was four at the time, relocated to Denver. Now, I know for a lot of people that's not possible or that sounds absolutely nuts. I get it. <laughs> um, but that just goes to show you where I was at that time and what I needed as part of my healing journey. And also the fact that I, the, the amount of pain that I was in required a massive move of action. Oh, I guess literally <laughs> a move. Um, but my point to you is that when you find yourself engulfed and enveloped in this pain, because grief has a way of coming over you and making you feel like this is now your identity. You are a griever. You are a mourner. And that simply is not true. And the pain and the emotion can overwhelm you to the point where you can use that as evidence to make it true, but it's not. So for me, I said, I know this is not right, but I don't know what is. So God, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to move when you tell me to move because I don't know what else to do, but I know that this is not going to work anymore. And so I got to Denver and I've been here almost two years. And while it's definitely a major change from being in Miami, it has been the most transformational healing experience of my life. Over that time, I took a little break from work and I really focused on my healing. I focused on drawing closer to God. I focused into leaning into the areas that needed the most attention. And through that, not only did I find a peace, a solace, and an acceptance of the fact that my husband was no longer here, that I overnight practically became a single mother, I was able to lean into the fact that I'm not alone. And that as devastating as this was, there is a path to creating purpose out of this pain. And that to me was so comforting to know that God had a plan for this. God knew what I was going to go through the same way he knows what you're going through. And so with that, becoming all she was born, I'm so excited. <laughs> this has been so long overdue and I'm going to try not to cry because it really has been a journey. It really has been a push through fear through the voices in my head, not, not, not the crazy ones, but that voice that you hear that tells you like, no one wants to hear what you have to say. No one cares. Those voices that want to keep you locked down. That is what I've been through over the last several months, wanting to use my voice, wanting to put this out there for you to let you know that you're not alone, to let you know that it does get better. And so this is the very first video, if you didn't know already. And here's what you can look to expect on this channel. So of course, um, we're gonna be talking about grief management, how I deal with grief, how others deal with grief, and how we can pull our resources together to support one another. I'm also going to be sharing with you a lot about legacy and purpose and how those two things work together and help you the same way that I learned how to discover your purpose and maybe even figure out strategies on how you can turn your pain into purpose so that it can feed an amazing legacy for you to leave behind. Um, and lastly, but certainly not least, every now and then I'll give you a sneak peek of what's going behind the scenes here. Um, I do have a well, now five, now turning six year old, and he is a trip. So um, 
motherhood, single motherhood at that. What that's looked like, what's that adjustment has been like. I'll bring you guys in behind the scenes and, and learn from you guys too. So if this video has been helpful or if you know someone that can benefit from it, please like this video. If you smile just once, that's all I need. Um, and if you'd like to see more and you want to uh, join me on this journey, don't forget to subscribe. Now, if you've watched this video and you've got into this part, first of all, thank you. <laughs> Second, okay, so clearly my hair is dry. <laughs> I look a little bit different. I We almost made it to the end with no mishap, but when I was uploading this video, I noticed that the clip at the end got lost. I think my battery died, but here I am. And so to close out this video again, Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. And if this video resonates with you, if you know someone that could really benefit from this information, please share this video with them. And if that person is you and you need someone to talk to, you can find my contact information linked below. You can find me on Instagram, uh, my website, or my email address. And something I'd like to leave you with, my grandmother says and, and i think i'm gonna make this my tagline we'll see um but something that she would always say is be kind to yourself so you can be kind to someone else i love you take care and i'll see you in the next video bye